In today's video, I'm gonna give you a tour of my room here on the Ruby Princess, on my 16-day Panama Canal cruise, but I'm also gonna tell you how much this cruise costs and what that costs included. So let's go. What is going on, YouTube family? Greetings from Ruby Princess's Shipboard Laundry. Pretty cool place. They have a book exchange here. You uh, bring a book and you can take a book and there's a ton of books in here. It's pretty cool, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today, we're gonna talk about what my 16-day Panama cruise on Ruby Princess costs. But first, I wanna give you a little room tour of my inside cabin on board so you can kind of see what that cost includes. So I was on deck 10 of Ruby Princess in cabin C244 all the way forward. I'm a budget traveler, and when you travel on a budget on cruise ships, you always look for the inside cabins. Those are generally the cheapest cabins, and in this case, it definitely was. No matter how I travel, I'm a firm believer in you live out of your condo, you live out of your apartment, and in the case of a cruise ship, you live out of your cabin. So I really don't mind being in an inside cabin. As a matter of fact, I sleep like a baby because it's like a cave in here. So it's pretty awesome. I like it. It's perfect for me. You've got this nice bed here. You've got a desk. You've got the TV here, which we'll come back to in a second. But let's head back here and look at the closet area. So the closet was plenty big for me. I'm sure if there was two people in here, it'd be plenty for two people. There were tons of hangers, which was great. There was a kind of a drawer, I guess and a safe to keep your valuables in. Plenty of space for me. I only carry one bag, so not a big deal. The bathroom, again, perfect for me. Shower was nice. Water was always hot. Toilet was serviceable. It's a bathroom. I only use it to shower and do my business, so not a big deal. There's a stand-up mirror to make sure you look good. And let's go back in here real quick just to check out this TV. So. This isn't a smart TV, you can't touch it and make it work, but with the remote control, you can do a ton of different things. You can order food, you can obviously watch movies, live TV, that kind of stuff. You can even gamble on this thing. You can buy shore excursions, you can arrange your dining time, so a ton of things can be done on here. So that's some pretty cool technology. Actually, there was a ton of cool technology on this ship, but that's not why you're here for this video. You wanna know how much did this cruise cost? What did that cost include? and how do I find such cheap cruises? So let's jump into that. So for me, there are four fixed costs when I cruise. The cruise fare, obviously, the port fees, the taxes, and the gratuities. So that's like tips for the crew, and you can prepay those if you want. I prepaid them. So let's talk about what the fixed costs for this cruise were, because that's what I consider the real cost of a cruise. Everything else is optional, they're add-ons, you know, like the casino, specialty dining, all that kind of stuff. But let's talk about what this cruise would actually cost someone that is on a budget. So cruise fare for this cruise was $499. I know that sounds ridiculously cheap, but I found a great deal. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video, but it was only $499. And I know you might not believe me, so I'm gonna put up my receipt here so you can see it. The port fees and taxes were 450. Now, I know that sounds a little bit expensive, but it's a Panama Canal cruise and you have to pay per person to go through the canal. So that's why it's a little bit more expensive than you'd normally see for port fees and taxes. And finally, the gratuities, I prepaid them, like I said, they're $232 for this 16-day cruise. So the total cost was $1,181 for all the fixed costs. So that's $74 a day for this 16-day Panama Canal cruise on Ruby Princess. Okay, let's talk about what I got for that price. Let's talk about all the things that are included. So there was a special promotion going on at the time. So when I booked my cruise, I got $200 for excursions. If you don't know what excursions are, those are trips you can take sponsored by the cruise ship when you get into a port. So like I did snorkeling in Huatuco. I did a walking tour in Costa Rica stuff like that. So with that $200 shore excursion credit, I was able to do three shore excursions, cost me no money. It was included with my fare. You're not always gonna get that, but most cruises you book, you're probably gonna find some kind of promotion. 
I also got a $250 credit because I am retired military. I believe they give it to active duty retired and maybe even veterans. I'm not 100% sure, but I know for sure they give it to active duty and retired. If you know if they give it to veterans as well, uh, comment down below. So that $74 a day includes all the meals in the buffet, the food in the international cafe, the food at the salty dog grill on the pool deck, as much pizza as you want from the pizza oven place and as much ice cream as you want from there. It also includes your meals in the formal dining room. So you can do breakfast, lunch, and dinner in the formal dining room if you want. I didn't take advantage of that very much. I did go to lunch there a lot, but not breakfast and dinner very often. I should have, but I did. You get unlimited iced tea, hot tea, decaf and regular coffee, uh, lemonade and orange juice, but you don't have to pay for drinks if you don't want to. You can pay for alcoholic drinks, you can pay for soda, or you can get a package that gives you a special rate for the entire cruise for alcohol and soda as well. Your cruise fare also includes all the shows, all the events, anything that's happening on the cruise ship is included with your fare. So there's plenty of entertainment on board, lots of live music, lots of shows, lots of like comedy type things, lots of trivia, lots of movies under the stars, things like that. And of course you get access to the gym, you can go work out as much as you want, you have access to the pools, all those types of things on board you have access to. There's nothing really restricted on board except for this place called the Sanctuary, which is on the front of the ship. I actually did it for one day and I didn't think it was that big of a deal anyway, so I personally wouldn't pay for it again but there is like a little private area. So I guess if you're on a cruise that had a bunch of kids and you didn't like kids and you wanted a more private area, you could pay for this area called the sanctuary, but I didn't think it was worth the money personally. Okay, so what's not included? So any type of specialty dining. So if you're going to one of the restaurants on here, like this ship has a restaurant called Crown Grill, a restaurant called Sabatini's, you have to pay to go eat at those places. There are plenty of free options, but if you wanna go and have a very, very formal dining experience, like three hours, have a huge giant t-bone steak you can do that you can go to crown grill or have an amazing italian meal i think the crown grill is 29 dollars for the meal on board which includes four course meal including steak or lobster and all that kind of stuff you can get steak and lobster in the main dining room but it's not as high quality uh, there's also sabatini's which i went to which is an italian restaurant and the food is great in there i think that one's 20 something dollars i can't remember exactly what the price is but uh it was uh it was pretty reasonable. If you've been watching my videos, you know that specialty coffees are not included as well. I've been ordering my butter pecan latte every single morning, cost three to four dollars, but it was well worth it to me. I did find out that for $32, I could have paid for a coffee package. I didn't know that, I wasn't aware of that, but in the future, when I go on Princess Cruises, I'll probably purchase the coffee packets because I drink a coffee every single morning because I usually don't eat breakfast, that's kind of my breakfast. My weakness is, you know, foo-foo coffees, Butter pecan latte comes highly recommended from me on board uh, princess ships. As I mentioned before, alcohol is not included. You can get an alcohol package, which gets you 15 drinks a day, I believe, which is a ton of drinks. I don't know how someone would drink 15 drinks a day. I did do the math one day and worked it out that you'd have to drink at least seven alcoholic beverages a day to break even on the package, but you can pay individually. So I only had a couple alcoholic beverages on board. Uh, you know, a mojito, a beer, and they were between seven and $10 a piece. You also have to pay for soda on board. They do have a soda package, but soda's like two or $3 uh, for a big glass of soda. So if you're into drinking soda, maybe the soda package would be worth your while. I just drank tea the whole time. I mentioned shore excursions earlier. You also have to pay for shore excursions. I was fortunate to have a $200 shore excursion credit. So, you know, I didn't need to pay for mine. They were included in my cruise fare. But if you wanted to take a shore excursion and you didn't have any shore excursion credit or onboard credit, then you'd have to pay out of your pocket. The shore excursions range in price anywhere from like $19.99 all the way up to hundreds of dollars when you take a helicopter out to a glacier in Alaska. You also have to pay for spa services. So if you want a facial, you want a manicure, you want a pedicure, you want Botox, you want acupuncture, they do all that kind of stuff on board, massages, you have to pay for that, obviously. So that's another thing that's not included in the cruise fare. It'd be great if it was, a massage was included, but it's not. And the last thing that's not included, that's pretty important to me, is internet, so you have to pay for that. It's somewhere around $10 a day for one device. I had no problem using the one device package for my phone and my computer. Okay, let's talk about how I found 
this cruise deal and most of the cruise deals I've been booking, I've, I've received a lot of comments saying, dude, there's no way you're gonna be able to do this for around $100 a day. Well, I hate to break it to you, but I've booked nine cruises, maybe even 10 now, for around $100 a day. Some under 100, some maybe $105 a day, $106 a day. But I've been able to stay pretty close to that $100 a day. I mean, this cruise was $74 a day for a Panama Canal cruise. The way I've done that is I've used a website called Cruise Plum. I'm not associated with them in any way. They don't pay me any money. They don't make any money. I, I use their website all the time. I haven't paid anybody. But you can sort by solo supplement. You can sort by day. You can sort by cruise line. And it's just really easy to find deals. Now, that being said, that's not your one and only place to find deals because I've noticed that cruise ship pricing fluctuates wildly day to day. And Princess, I found, really fluctuates wildly. So when I find a cruise that's in a pretty good price range, I go to the Princess website or the other cruise lines website, Royal Caribbean, NCL, I do the same thing. I favorite that cruise and every day I go in a couple times a day and I check the price. That's how I got this cruise for $499. Originally this cruise was $1,100 and I seen it go down to $900. And then one day when I jumped on and checked, it was $499. I booked it right away at $499. And then a couple hours later, it was 700 and something dollars for the same cabin I have. So you, if you're flexible, and you're able to wait and like track prices, then you can find some really great deals. That's how I found all the deals you'll see in my little spreadsheet here uh, on Royal Caribbean. I've got one on NCL I'm working on right now. You'll see MSC. MSC, you can always find cruises for under $100 a day. I'm just gonna put that out there. MSC and Princess have been the easiest for me to find uh, relatively low cost per day cruises. Uh, Royal Caribbean, obviously I found some, you can see them on here. NCL has been a little bit harder and that's how I've been finding these cruises. I've been using Cruise Plum and then I've been tracking them religiously on the cruise ships website. I just wanna say welcome to all my new subscribers and all the subscribers that stuck with me during the nine months that I did not make any videos. I really appreciate it. And if you're, this is the first time you're watching me, Make sure you uh, subscribe if you're into cruise content or travel content. And if you wanna see what I'm gonna do over the next year, I'm gonna travel on nothing but cruise ships, check out this video right here. Thanks for watching. See you next video.